By now you should have finished creating your Arduino project and be ready to start testing it out. We're going to need to work out what sort of distance we can run when we're using the different time and speeds that we have in our code. The best way to test this out will be to do some two second time trials to run forwards for two seconds at a motor speed of 100 and 150 and 200. To be able to do this I've created some code for you which you will be able to copy sitting here in the classroom so if you copy and tinker this it will give you the code that you can see here. This code is the two second time trial so it starts with our if statement to be able to switch it on and then it's going to run for two seconds at 200 and then switch off and it's going to wait for five seconds so you can pick your model up and move it back to the beginning position to be able to run for then two seconds at 150. Remember you're going to be measuring the distance at the end of each of these trials and then once it's finished the two seconds and you've measured it it'll switch off and you'll have five seconds to be able to move it back to the beginning again and then it's going to run the last one at 100 so it's going to do the fastest first and then the slowest so you'll be able to get a an approximation of the distance that you can travel in two seconds which you'll need to make a note of and then divide that into the distance of the actual course to determine what speed you would like to run at and then for that speed approximately how long you're going to have to run in seconds and that will give you your best bet to initiate your course. So this is just a straight run. We've got the servo, if you're using a servo, it's set at 90 degrees, ready to go straight. So this is also a very good chance for you to be able to determine whether your model can actually run in a straight direction or not. And you can, once you've succeeded in working with this, of course go and change these figures to uh, slightly longer times to see what happens. Now when you are running this it's going to be running in a text mode so you're going to be adjusting and seeing the code that looks like this. We've written it as blocks because that's certainly the easiest way to do it but when we go to do our modifications we're going to be modifying it in the text mode which you can see here. So you can see here is the 200, the 200 which is my speed that we're working at and then you can see I've got the speed turned off down to zero and there's our five second delay so it's very straightforward to actually come and change the code in the text mode but a little bit more difficult to write it in that way. Now to download the code to your computer once you're in the code mode here you're going to click on download code and that will drop it down into your computer as an INO file. Now you're going to need to upload that through a USB cable to the Arduino and the way we do this is with a program that is provided by Arduino and you can find it back here on the ICT page under code online. Clicking on code online will open up the create Arduino web page. Here we go. So when you come in to the Arduino create area you'll be presented with the web editor. Click on this and you'll need to create an account. Now I already have mine here um, but if you go to sign in with Google and sign in with your Google account uh, it will probably send you an email that would request that you verify your account but it will bring you into the editor so you can use your school account. You can see I've already got quite a lot of things sitting in here and what I need to do now is I'm going to import the file that we just downloaded. So that should be sitting up here in my downloads area and there it is there. There's a couple of other uh, of my Arduino codes. It's this little uh, infinity symbol that you can see this uh, teal colored one that we want. Test of distance. So we're going to click on that and then open. And that will import it into the web editor. That's fine. And here we can see the test of distance traveled in two seconds. So this is the code I'm going to need to uh, import into my Arduino unit. And when I'm going to be modifying it, uh, I'll be running this program and you'll 
probably be doing this on one of the Mac laptops. We can't do it unfortunately on a Chromebook or you could be bringing your model back into one of the desktops but you'll be changing the parameters in this code here. So that's now ready to run uh, except I don't have my Arduino actually connected. To be able to connect my Arduino I'm going to have to uh, plug it in with the USB cable. So I'm just going to uh, plug in the USB cable to my Arduino unit and once that's plugged in I should be able to now see uh, some information about the board that I have okay and when I click on the down arrow here I can confirm what I've got we are looking in here you'll get something similar to this on the Max we will find the board that we're working with which is an Arduino Genua Uno and there will be a COM port now the COM port for the Max will say uh, something like USB uh, serial driver um, if there is nothing or no ports area showing over here then it means the computer is not set up correctly at that point and so we'll have to go back and either change computers for you or get the IT people to uh, reconfigure it it does seem to drop out sometimes on some of the computers that we've got in room 11 but uh, it should be working there now uh, once we've got the board set up and the port that it's connected to we're then able to we can verify our code of course which we should have been doing in the Arduino Tinkercad area but uh, we'll just click that to make sure that it's working properly and uh, goes through and does a, a quick check it seems to be happy about that and then we go ahead and upload the code so we click on the upload and it goes away we get some different messages uh, it sends the material through and once it's up then it automatically runs on the Arduino uh, in this case it means that you would then be able to press the switch and if you've got power connected uh, to the battery uh, through the battery to the motor controller you'd actually see the motor start to work straight away but remember we've got that that push button switch to be able to start the whole program so having got this ready we're now able to uh, disconnect the USB cable once that USB cable is disconnected we can have all of our power set up so I've just disconnected my USB cable you can see it's disappeared there and uh, now I'm ready to take the model and put it down and test it as a running and functioning unit now once I've got my measurements if I want to come back and make any changes to my program I'll plug the USB cable back in and I can change for example my uh, speeds that I'm working with here or I could change the amount of time that I'm running to see what the results of that would be on the model now you should go through and do those three tests at least to see what's going to be the optimum speed for you to be able to run in a straight direction and calculate approximately how long you're going to have to run to be able to get the first leg of your journey done and once you've done that then that will be the basis for the rest of your programming that you can do in the six legs that you've set up now calculating the amount of time we're going to run each motor perhaps to do a turn or how we're going to run the servo motor to do the turn uh, will be the subject of a different set of instructions good luck